So Narcissist in the Mirror is, um, it's a one woman show about a young girl who is um, desperately trying to find self-worth. Um, and it's, it came inspiration wise, I think it was probably a lot from my own experience. Um, I am a millennial and um, I think I really struggled to find sort of what my purpose was. I think I expected a lot more to happen than it did and well the tagline is she expected the world to fall at her feet and uh, though it's not a story about myself it's inspired by I think a lot of my own traits and then they're magnified to a huge extent The narcissist as I call the character is is definitely a very eccentric version of myself um, but she she's basically in, in the story in what happens in the play she's She's looking through memoirs of herself and she's delving into herself and she's wondering whether I think the, whether the problems that she's facing are on the world around her, they're being sort of, they're coming from an external place or whether she's responsible. I think the problem is I, I don't know how much is, is real or how much it is that we just are aware of everyone else around us now. I think maybe before we weren't, we weren't aware of everyone else's, like where everyone was in life. Whereas I think now it's so easy to monitor how everyone around us is doing that you can't help but feel like you're losing the race or you're, you're coming last, especially in the dating world. Like she talks about, she struggles, Nasa struggles with, uh, she's a bit of a love addict and she struggles a lot with love. There's so much access to the opposite sex and to be able to go on dates, you know, you can literally just pick up your phone and go on a date that night. and and. I think the fact that everything is now so accessible, whether that's seeing what someone else is earning, seeing how much someone's lost that month weight-wise because they're posting about how healthy they're eating. I wasn't born at another time, so it's very hard for me to compare. <laughs> but I am certainly, I've got personal, I've struggled personally with, with I think, what the, the millennial sort of, oh, what would you call it, the, the curse of the millennial, the curse of the millennial to feel like uh, you're just, you're not winning, you're not doing what you should be doing and what you were maybe thought that you could at this age. I moved back home. Found myself 23, unemployed and living with my parents with no idea how to get my career off the ground. I did what anyone in my position would have done. Downloaded Tinder. <laughs> Writing saved my life. And, and, and I mean that in the, the least cheesy way possible. I know it sounds exceptionally cheesy. But um, I, I, in May last year, I left the country and I went travelling. I, um, I had a complete crisis. And it was only towards the end of the trip that I, um, I saw, uh, who's now become a really good friend, um, this, uh, well, there's the three of them, a group of um, poets called the Potty Mouths. And they were posting on social media these, um, these poems. And I was out in the Philippines at the time, still really unsure what I was doing with my life, travelling alone. And uh, I was like, oh, I like, I like this spoken word. And, then, and I started um, at the end of my trip whilst I was out in, in uh, Philippines. And then I came back and I carried on writing. It has changed my life significantly because all those, all those issues that I had and all those sort of fears and things that I didn't like about myself, I have gone the other way rather than trying to hide them and, and sort of not show them. I've, gone the, I've literally just gone, here I am. I really want to get other people writing spoken word. It's really becoming a a huge thing at the moment, it's real popular and I'm really hoping that the, the whole art form it really gets more support and helps other people deal with their problems. 